we were praying in our own territory that God should install a political leader that will align with righteousness. And it was obvious that our prayers had a massive impact. And then this agent of darkness, when he checked the statistics, checked the fact that he's not likely to win. He turned to spiritual means. If you say you have a prophetic ministry and you are not a master of Bible prophecy, there is no way you can be accurate in prophetic ministry. <laughs> you, 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 your, your, your prophetic ministry is out of sync with the context. It's a toy. It's not part of the stream. And you are prone to a lot of error and to, to leading people on a path that is inconsistent with the highway that has already been built. That's the difference between someone trying to um, traffic an utterance and he doesn't know the revelation of Jesus on the matter. The other day we found ourselves in France. And because we could not speak French, and they, even if a Frenchman can speak English, he chooses not to speak English just because you are claiming that you don't understand his language. From Charles de Gaulle airport, we were lost, we were stranded because... <laughs> <laughs> we could not. We moved from place to place. I had to click on my phone and, and I located the hotel and then use the phone to navigate my way to. Because if you speak to someone, say, Hey, how you doing? The person say, Ce n'est pas, come pro. <laughs> they all knew how to speak English. Right? But they are not willing to condescend to your level. You need to upgrade to their level. Please tell your neighbor we need to upgrade. You've been on the sidelines for too long. <laughs> we, need to, we need to upgrade. What I'm talking about is the only way by which we can be ahead of witchcraft. It's the only way by which we can be ahead of people that draw their reference from the kingdom of darkness. It's the only way we can be ahead of them whose wisdom is found in darkness. Whenever darkness begins to operate, it operates with a mystery. It operates with something that, that the devil knows you are not aware of. They say, yes, your yes, spiritual things are, are rough with mysteries. Even the kingdom of God is shrouded in mysteries so that you cannot stumble upon his depth at face value. When spiritual things begin to arise, it's a battle of secrecy and depth. That's why things are sealed with the seal of God. I know you have seen it in the book of Revelation. A book that was sealed with seven seals. If God has written the book for, for our benefit, why is it sealed? If the kingdom of God is the context in which we are supposed to operate, why does the Bible say we should seek, seek the kingdom? Seek it. Because kingdom things are sealed things. And everyone will need to access life. In order for him to unveil the combination lock that is shrouded either in language, in mystery, in a proverb. Sometimes people see an eclipse. A man of light will come and tell you the, what is hidden in this sign. You will find so many people trying to be prophetic, trying to run commentaries. <laughs> Don't talk until you have light. The, the, the talk is too much. Everywhere is flooded with people talking. At this time that Daniel's credential was read to the current king so that he can seek solution from him, he had retired. He was summoned in old age from retirement because there was a writing. <laughs> and they had tried the abilities of the, of the enchanters, they tried the abilities of the astrologers and the magicians. And they fell short of what it was required to unveil the meaning of the writing. It was obvious that it was not a writing in a human tongue. And that was why those guys could not get it. Because they were wise in their time. There is something beyond the wisdom of darkness. And that's why the Bible is full of miscalculations of the devil. The Bible says that the princes of this world had known. They wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. It was a miscalculation. The moment they miscalculated. When they killed Jesus. What they did not know was that they set him free. They set him free from his own body. They set him free from being a single entity. 
And because he's free from his own body, if you believe him today, his spirit will possess you. And as you grow in him, Satan will have many more Jesuses at various levels to contend with just because he made an error killing him. Even if you check your own life, you will see miscalculations. The, the, the things you experienced were not the things Satan intended. Prayer had manipulated it. And the outcome of your experience was not consistent with the original intent. The, one guy called me. He just bought a brand new car and he was flowing through town. You know, <laughs> just flowing. And before the close of work that day, he had an accident. And he cried out. It's a challenge. And I told him, do you think the devil, it was your car he wanted to scratch? <laughs> so in all his dealings, is the, is the color of your, the dent that he wanted to give you. It was just another manifestation of a miscalculation. He didn't calculate properly. He wanted your blood to be spilled on the tar. But there was a mistake in his calculation. The reason is because he doesn't have light. Yes, sir. Notice that this woman said that the wisdom that Daniel had was like the wisdom of the gods. The wisdom of the deities. Those deities that people take in river and areas. They take Keno and travel to where they are mountains. To go and consult them. He said, well, if Daniel is around, you don't need to go to the creeks. He's a deity in, in himself. Because he has light. Now, when I study the scriptures, I see how, how we have refused to grow in the possibilities that are bound in Christ. Many of us have been measured into time. And we operate by human instincts. We don't understand what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john what i came to tell you this morning is that communication has shifted and if we don't shift along we'll not understand the new language by which god is communicating my friend the other day was was an expert in a certain programming language called visual basic and after four years he, he was not into programming four years later he wanted to try his hands on a few things and he found out that he was an illiterate he was what he knew was totally obsolete the language had advanced. In fact, more effective languages like Python have already been generated. And, and that's strange to him because when he went to school as a computer science student, there was nothing like Python. The programming language that the average believer is using is so obsolete. And that's why we have not been able to contain the devils of our time. The preacher has been restricted to be a man that talks. A talkative, like a newscaster, a parrot. But we need an upgrade. The language has shifted. In order for us to be eligible to receive the revelation of Jesus. Many times we will need an upgrade. Many times. Many times. And even as a preacher, there are times where God will need to summon you from the pulpit. You leave the pulpit for a while and go and upgrade. The language has changed. The language has changed. The communication has changed. The wisdom that was found in Daniel was like the wisdom of the gods. Whereas Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were asked to bow to the image that Nebuchadnezzar put up, Daniel was not asked to bow. Because in the eyes of Nebuchadnezzar, he was a deity. Many of us are bowing down to the strain of the economy, bowing down to circumstances, bowing down to situation. People that have upgraded their language don't bow. They don't bow. He was head of the magicians. When are we going to display the fact that witches and warlocks are down in the, in the ladder? There's an evidence that you show that we are superior. And our superiority is not yet on display because we have not upgraded. Please help me preach your neighbor. If the servant of darkness is not yielded to Satan, you are not preaching. I say preach to your neighbor. If the servant of darkness is more yielded to Satan than you are yielded to God, then darkness will overcome light. 
under such circumstances darkness can you check 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 out the on your nations is it reflective of your god the tale the paradox of our nations is suggestive of the fact that our light is not is not bright enough i remember the other day we were praying in our own territory that god should install a political leader that will align with righteousness okay so who were praying who were praying who were praying who were praying and it was obvious that our prayers had a massive impact because the hearts of the people had turned away from the agent of darkness and then this agent of darkness when he checked the statistics checked the fact that he's not likely to win he turned to spiritual means sacrifice a young a newborn child 24 hours before the election a newborn child was sacrificed the whole election was done there was confusion everywhere at the end at the end of the confusion at the end of the thing a man that was not ordained by god was crowned The agent of darkness know what to do when there's a tightrope to overturn things. How much, how much skill have you developed? Now, what can your prayer do? If you say, if they bring you on the scene in a certain situation, what can your prayer do? You know what is lacking? It's light. <laughs> light. Light. Because when light goes to work, the measure of the Chaldeans and the sorcerers will be discovered to be way beneath the capacity of light. He was made master of the magicians. What I'm teaching you this morning are my personal contemplations. There's a realm of light that I know that I've not been ushered into, that I desire desperately. And I will not stop seeking it until God has mercy on my poor soul and grants me access. There is a language you need to know. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see that thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. He said, I've received, I'm one of your brethren that has received the testimony of Jesus. The splendor I'm manifesting, the light I have with which I'm unveiling the things I'm telling you. I have it because I received the testimony of Jesus. When I unveiled the things that I received, you, you, you likened me to God. But you see, do not do it. Because I'm one of your fellow brethren. It's not that I've been upgraded. <laughs> I've been elevated. Just like Daniel was elevated that they saw deity in him. When you are elevated into the realm of light, ah, people, they did the appearance of God. He wanted to, you know, they said, to calm down. I'm not God. I'm one like you. But the difference between me and you <laughs> is that I received what? Testimony. The testimony of Jesus. I received the testimony of Jesus. The revelator stumbled into my domain. The revelation stumbled into my domain. You know, you still remember in the book of John chapter 12 when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If any man walketh after me, he shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. Meaning that the life of God on your inside is capable of, of reflecting that light that God is. And if you receive that light that God is in your heart, Jesus said you will never walk in darkness.
John, as powerful as John was, he wanted to go prostrate. He said, he said My true identity is that I'm one like you, but I have received what? A testimony. Then he gave us a definition of what the testimony of Jesus is. For the testimony of Jesus is a spiritual prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the life of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the substance of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus, hearing Jesus speak, is the essence of prophecy. It's the life source of prophecy. When you hear a man prophesy, it, the substance, what generated those utterances, is the testimony of Jesus. I was in prayer, just all by myself, just praying for my city, praying for my location. And, and when I persisted in the prayer for a few days, the hand of God came into the room and I was knocked off. I fell under the intense presence of God that has formed in that place. And when I fell under the intense presence of God, the Lord took my spirit and we went into the past. Then I saw men that God had previously raised to bear witness of his name and his resurrection in my city. These men that God raises, there is something that he gives them. And the moment he gives them that thing, they start becoming prominent. Their voice is heard. People's hearts turn to them. Now you might think, you might think the reason why people hear you is because you are on social media. There's a bishop in my city. He's also on social media. Gets like five views, seven views, ten views. So he's so angry at me. The reason why he's, he's angry at me is he, he believes that I'm the one that obscured the room. Social media is like the sky, for God's sake. Now, I don't know. It's once in my lifetime when, when we were airborne that I saw another plane. Once, just once. And where was that? In the US. Yes. Have you ever seen any plane? Maybe you sit by the by the window seat. Have you ever seen any plane by the I say, hey, how are you? <laughs> Only once. And I tell you, I have really been airborne. So if there's anything there, I should have seen it. It's once in my flight time. I looked through my window and saw another plane. And the reason why it was so is because in their own airports they have different runways, not like this our standard gauge. They have different runways. So as you are coming in, somebody is going out and the other... In fact, four or five planes can land at the same time. So that's why I saw... The sky is so vast. The fact that you are flying, you have not done it. The next one that wants to fly has enough room. He thought that if he stays on social media, there's a platform to talk that human beings will hear him. He doesn't know that what makes people hear you is that Jesus gives you something. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. So I saw, I saw these preachers. Jesus will give him something. Then he starts becoming influential. Start becoming influential. So the real thing God gives you that we human beings interpret as blessing is influence. That's the real thing he gives you. He gives you influence. That's what he gives you. It is through that influence that so many things happen. But the real thing he gives you is influence. And that influence is tied to a spiritual deposit. The moment he re removes that deposit, the influence will win. Even if you are so smart that you build an administration around the influence, which many people have been trained to do. So that even if God is not there, they can still have something strapped. Have, they can have people in a charismatic zoo. But God is no longer there. They come and feed them rations. The tigers will jump. But God has left. But the people were smart enough to set up an administration. Sometime, at some point, the God that is in the system is the administration because God has left. When God leaves, influence will begin to wane. You will need human methods to keep things going. And when you begin to use human methods to keep things going, Satan will propose himself to become the head of the synagogue. He will take the place of God because God has left. Everything is still going on. 
but the source has changed. And that's why Paul had to tell us where his source was from. The ek has changed. The origin has changed. So God put that influence on that preacher, one preacher, name which because most of you are from that place. So if I start mentioning names, you will know what. And then when you know the name, you are no longer listening to the message, you are analyzing the person. So this preacher grew. He expanded. The city began to gather to him. He died. When he died, 12 years later, Jesus took the same thing, put on another, another man. This man that died was a man that was the original man trained for that role. But because of a little carelessness, he was exposed at some point and he was cut down. The second man that they gave after 12 years was not prepared for the role, didn't know there was any role like that. But because Jesus wanted to hold sway in the land, this guy is not prepared. They gave him. When they gave him, he started becoming influential. Started becoming, ah, people believed him. People began to gather around him. And because he was not prepared for the role, he thought he was the one that was the star. He used to boast. Big guy. When I went there, I saw the lady that was the secretary. I knew he had died because we went to the same campus with that lady, the same university with that lady. Oh. So in this boasting that he was boasting, he couldn't see this lady. Oh. I pity. That was the last time I visited the place. I knew that he was dead. I knew he was dead. The next time I saw him, he was so sick that I don't want to describe what I... He died. He died a shameful death. Then the mantle was given to somebody else that was not ready. Young people began to gather to him. Young people began to gather. Something began to take place. The moment you are giving that mantle, there is a demon. A demon, how would I describe this demon? It is standing erect, but it has a shell of a tortoise. That demon will come. The first thing the demon will do is that if there are people that are praying for you, somebody that is committed to praying for you, he will disconnect you from that person. And I don't want to mention names. I would have shown you the pattern from the first one because that's what Jesus showed me in this encounter. From the first one to the second one. The same pattern. When that prayer support is withdrawn, you begin to lose your life of holiness. <laughs> and just like that lady on our campus struck this man, you become interested to people that will destroy, that are destructive, that Satan had trained in the art of destruction. And then Jesus told me, we will give you this thing. But you have eight years to prepare. Within these eight years, meanwhile, and that's a privilege. I'm not a good person. I'm not, I don't even know why Jesus decided to choose me. Because I'm not as strong as any one of these people. So in terms of strength, I don't have it. He said, we will give you this thing, but we'll give you in, in eight years time. Do you know that the noisiest, the noisiest season of that city was that eight years? So many noise make us rose. And I knew from the revelation of Jesus that none of them had anything. May you not be among people that make noise. Go and look for Jesus. I beheld this your city and I saw a wilderness, a vast wilderness. And only a few altars that had the color green. The other altars were brown. Some were black. Some, you know, green means it's alive. Brown means it used to be here. Black means it's gone. And I saw congregations gathering around brown altars. 
I saw some others gathering big congregation around black, three black altars. God was saying something used to be here. In 2019, in August, on the 19th day of August 2019, that was where the shofar was blown in heaven. Announcing my own rising. The shofar was blown on the 19th of August 2019. But the season, we began to experience the season in March 2020. I had to go and study all the people that carried it before me. Why was there a challenge? God will not tell you everything. If you, are, if you are willing to stay afloat, you will take responsibility for your navigation. When I discovered what was wrong, I adjusted my life. The adjustment took me how many years? The adjustment in terms of prayer, the adjustment in terms of fasting, the adjustment in terms of sacrificial giving. Do you know what? I found out that sacrificial giving is a big thing in the kingdom of God. Make yourself a sacrificial giver. After 10 years, compare notes with casual resistance. Sacrificial. 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 The ability to lay it down. The power. It takes a lot of strength to do that. Sacrificial. Sacrificial. And when people see that you are such a person, they will cash in on it. Those people that are laboring to receive from you have, have signed that they will never be great. You know, they think they are white. They're, oh, he has an open heart. So I, I just plug in, then you, you, you cash out. You plug, you cash out. You cash out. In 10 years' time, give them if you have. Give them. Those ones will never give. You see, it's not the man that has that gives, it's the giver that gives. <laughs> is a giver that gives if a man has not yet given for 10 years he doesn't know the power of giving if you have not prayed for 10 years consistently you don't know the power of prayer if you have not prayed fasted for 10 years consistently you don't know the power of fasting you are just moving around the, the sidelines you are a statistic that will be it's okay you are number four you're five you're a statistic the revelation of jesus that you have is going to shape your life it will affect the, your outlook to life Took me years. Took me years to adjust in the area of the mistakes I saw. That was why I stayed in that wilderness. I saw big cities like this. Saw big cities like Lagos. I remained in that wilderness. Once upon a time, the senior ministers of my city came to me. Significant ones came to me and said, You are wasting here. Move out of this place. You will end up like us. My heart shook. I went back to Jesus. That was not what Jesus was saying. So even people with their good intentions have the ability to sway you from the path. May our civilization go beyond good intentions. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.